So skin. Skin is probably our most valuable resource in climbing. It's the thing that attaches us to the rock and it's generally, along with energy, the thing that ends our session the quickest. So I'll start by saying there is a bit of a balance here with skin. Uh, there will be some people on one end of the spectrum who will climb with completely bloody busted tips. And there'll be people on the other end of the spectrum who as soon as their skin goes a little bit thin, they'll just stop climbing. The reality is I think somewhere in the middle uh, is better. If you can climb when your skin's not perfect, but also not let it get completely broken, you get a good middle ground. So with that said, everyone's skin as well is generally different. Uh, some people's skin will be pretty thick and hard and, and generally very dry. Other people's skin will be naturally quite thin and sweaty. So no one approach is kind of going to work for everyone. I think it's really important to kind of experiment with different treatments and different methods and really just see what works best for you. I generally try and work on the premise of prevention is better than cure. If you can have your skin good before a session, you're going to get a much longer session and you're going to be able to actually stop climbing before your session gets ended by your skin. So when it comes to prevention, one of the main things that I'm trying to think about when it comes to preparing my skin for climbing is trying to get my skin dry and kind of thicker. So if, for example, you're only able to climb on the weekend or once or twice a week, in the days leading up to, to those sessions, it is worth thinking about uh, your skin and things you can do to, to prepare it for those sessions. Ever since I found out about it, anti-hydral has been a bit of a game changer for me in uh, keeping my skin dry. It basically seems to stop your skin sweating. I'll use it once or twice a week and I'll just apply a small bit and rub it into each of the, the pads on the top of my fingers. And I'll just make sure not to get it in the creases of my fingers. Because um, once you kind of start drying those areas out, they're, they're much more pr prone to splitting. It's not an instant thing. So it won't be that you put it on and the next day your skin is like, thick as hell. I feel like it kind of has a cumulative effect where the effects of it builds up over a few days. So if you were to put it on the day before you climb, you'll definitely notice a difference the next day if you leave it on overnight. But then when you climb that day and wear your skin down to a reasonable level, if you then had a rest day the day after, the day after that when you were to climb again, I think you'd notice your skin, or I notice my skin tends to be much thicker and drier then after that. To a lesser extent, this uh, Rhino spray, the dry stuff, um, does the same thing, but just not quite as, as well as the anti-hydro. One thing you do have to watch out for with these types of uh, products is if you apply the anti-hydro and then you don't use the skin after, you just leave the skin, effectively what happens is it starts to go all dry and, and ends up peeling off like a bit, like a kind of snake skin type thing. If you're gonna apply it, you do actually have to I find use the skin. You don't have to climb, you can sand, and that has, for me, well, I found a similar effect. While I mentioned sanding, uh, sanding is definitely a good way to keep your skin nice and even. So if you've got any kind of bumps or cracks or uneven patches on the surface of your skin, what can happen on rock is that they'll quite easily, you'll hit a hold, and a rock, the rock will dig into where those little cracks are and it'll open stuff up and end up starting either causing splits or causing like big chunks and stuff to come out of your skin. So the best thing you can do with a file is one, is just to use it to keep your skin nice and even. The other thing I generally find the sanding quite useful for is just to, to wear my skin down if I'm not able to climb. Wearing it down with, with a sander after applying anti-hydral will then start to grow it back a little bit more thickly. During your session, I still think it's really important to be thinking about your skin and monitoring it as you go. It's really important, I think, to just keep checking your skin, make sure it's still nice and even, file it, sand it during the session if you need to, just to kind of keep it nice and even. So the other thing with skin is, yes, thinking about how it looks 
um, but also thinking about how it feels during the session. Your skin can start to feel hot and it can feel like it's sweating even if you've applied something like antihydro. So what I try and do a lot of the time is just wait to feel my skin actually cool down. If you wait and let it cool down a little bit, you'll feel it start to thicken and, and kind of feel drier. And I'll always make a point of actually waiting for my skin to feel good um, before pulling on. It's a massive extravagance, but this thing uh, has definitely become for me a staple and I know it has for a lot of other people as well. More so actually for keeping my skin in good condition than actually drying holes or drying rock or anything. I just find the, the, the kind of the wind from this cools my skin really well and actually gives me, I find it gives me a lot longer during actual sessions as well. It may be placebo, who knows, but for me personally, I generally do not go anywhere now without, without the fan, which, you know. It get, you get a lot of looks, uh, and even a lot of climbers still yet haven't embraced it, but, you know, uh, for me personally, it works, so I, uh, I stick with it. So the other thing you may have to think about during the session is uh, taping your fingers. Obviously, taping a, a split tip or a thin fingertip is a different thing from taping a pulley. For taping tips, um, a bunch of years ago a friend gave me a, a pretty useful method for taping uh, that involves a kind of thin, thinner width layer of tape wrapped all the way from the bottom of the tip to the top of the tip and then buffed up with some super glue at the bottom to make sure the tape doesn't have the chance to roll off your finger. Uh, if you've ever just put a one centimeter kind of thing of tape just around the tip of the finger. It's quite likely that you've ended up pulling it on and then within 20 minutes, half an hour, the thing has just kind of slid straight off the top of your finger and you're having to start again. So with this method, you do the job once and it's done. You don't do it three times and, and it's still not right. So it's, it's worth taking your time to do it. So this stuff, super glue, it, it sees a bit of use for beefing up tape, but it also sees some use uh, directly on tips to either stop splits or just to, I've seen people use it just to thicken their skin in a particular place. But with splits, it may be something you want to experiment with, but yeah, definitely with super glue, be careful because uh, it's got chemicals in it. So yeah. But for me, the main thing during the session is knowing when to stop. In my opinion, it's so much better to stop a little bit early than it is to blast your skin and have to have like two or three days of rest. So when you finish your session, there will be something wrong with your skin. Whether it'll be a little bit thin, or you've got a little cut somewhere, or you've taken off a little bit of skin. For tips and kind of generally covering and replenishing skin, there was a bit of mystique for years uh, around this stuff. This is Elizabeth Arden 8 hour cream. For me personally, this has been better than, than any other climbing specific skin cream. It's just the business. It grows back your skin super quickly. You got split, you plug a load of this stuff in a split, it heals really quickly. Flappers, chunks out of your skin, generally thin tips. Um, you stick this stuff on and it, and it generally makes a world of difference. So if you've got flappers, which is generally tends to be more of an indoor climbing thing, but it does occasionally happen outside as well. Obviously, if you've got a big flapper skin, you maybe need to use nail clippers or scissors just to get rid of the actual flap. And then again, you can just plug a load of Elizabeth Arden into that and maybe sand the edges a little bit so there isn't a lip for uh, any rock or anything to catch on in future. Then assuming you have a rest day the next day, you may find on the end of that day that your skin is thick enough to kind of apply a little bit of antihydral again. I'll generally try and avoid applying antihydral to really thin skin as it just, it doesn't allow the skin to actually really thicken up and you end up with a thin layer of dry skin and as soon as you go through that, you're back to like completely terrible skin again. And, but then assuming you climb the next day, you're pretty much back to the start again of having prevented and thought about and cured a bunch of skin stuff. So that's pretty much it really. There are obviously plenty more products um, and things that I could speak to about skin. Uh, these are just the main things that kind of work for me really. But my main piece of advice I think on skin related stuff is to experiment and to try as many different products and things as you can. 
see what works for you and what doesn't work for you. If there's anyone who's got any questions, any more stuff about skin, uh, just pop a comment down and I'll, uh, I'll try and get around to them. And yeah, good luck.